It is difficult to fathom that the people of Rome, just as people elsewhere in the world, are completely unaware that their own elected government, with the assistance of the United Nations, have since 1945 been poisoning their own people at chronic but sub lethal levels to impair their fertility and achieve necessary demographic objectives in order to avoid wars of necessity over scarce natural resources. Yet that is exactly what has been happening without the people's consent or knowledge. Controlling population growth is a substitute to war. The rationale is sound and simple. If a country maintains its population at a stable level and thus neither grows nor decreases over time, it will be able to feed its people and will not have to resort to war to take by force the resources of weaker neighbors. And if every country on earth stabilizes its population equally, then peace can be maintained for all times across the world and we would never again have to experience the horrible destruction and chaos of war. In our days we find it difficult to understand how the Romans drew pleasure from watching men fight to death, gladiators, right here in the Colosseum for no apparent benefit other than the entertainment of the crowd. Yet, Roman society somehow found the sacrifice worthwhile. Since that time, we believe to have made moral and social progress and to behave more humanely towards our fellow human beings. But the reality is that the gladiatorial combat of Roman times pales by comparison in scale and scope, if not in cruelty, with the sacrifices imposed on us by modern society. The Romans reduced men to creatures marked out for slaughter in the arena, for the gratification of emperors and the mob. The international community of today has condemned humankind to slaughter in far gentler, yet equally deadly ways, for the sake of managing the global population. The faithful have gathered in Rome from the four corners of the world to witness the canonization of two previous popes and to pay homage to an institution they trust and respect, the Roman Catholic Church. They represent every Christian denomination under the sun, but it is not their faith that is their single and most striking common denominator. What ties them all together is that they are all victims of the global depopulation policy a covert and secret program of population control that seeks to reduce the global population to a sustainable level and employs chemical and biological agents to undermine human fertility, as well as a variety of psychosocial and economic methods to subvert the family. The methods used by every country to control population growth have been dictated by the level of development and the existing infrastructure as much as by political will or lack thereof, and have either been imposed by force and deception from the outside, or adopted willingly by the governing elites of nation-states that have relied on the moral, technical, and monetary assistance of the United Nations, its agencies, and the greater international community. While China has used the one-child policy, thus open legislation, and India has employed covert surgical sterilization, the West has resorted to covert chemical sterilization. Fluoridation is the West's method of choice for suppressing fertility in both men and women. It has been used throughout the West since 1950, and fluoride is delivered either through tap water, table salt, or milk, depending on the country and its level of development. A few select and wealthy nations in Northern Europe use compulsory dental plans to ensure that every citizen receives periodic applications of fluoride directly in the mouth. Regardless of the delivery agent used, fluoridation has been imposed on the populace under the pretext that it combats tooth decay, which is completely inaccurate and dishonest. Of the four methods, water fluoridation is by far the most widespread, as it is used on nearly one billion people the world over. 
Water fluoridation, however, is only possible in places with a modern infrastructure of water treatment plants. And therefore, even in wealthy nations, it is only viable in cities that have at least 10,000 people. Salt fluoridation is the second most popular fluoridation method and is in use throughout Latin America and the Caribbean region, as well as in a few European countries that have abandoned water fluoridation. Milk fluoridation is restricted to very few countries and is used as a supplementary method of fluoridation elsewhere. To keep human beings in a constant state of fluoride poisoning, toothpaste and dental health products throughout the world are fluoridated. To close the loophole created by the modern habit of drinking bottled rather than tap water, the depopulation lobby has replaced glass with plastic bottling starting in 1980 and has used a specific fertility depressing chemical called bisphenol A, BPA for short, to manufacture two kinds of plastics, polycarbonates and epoxy resins. BPA is ingested when it leaches into food and beverages for human consumption. Since nearly every plastic bottle on the planet is now made of BPA-based polycarbonates and almost every metal and aluminum can in the world is lined with epoxy resins containing BPA, people are chronically exposed. The lining of metal cans with BPA is aimed at both the urban and rural poor who are more likely to eat canned soups, vegetables and fruit and will thus receive more than their share of fertility depressing agents as they will ingest it from multiple sources. But as the depopulation lobby has a strong eugenic component to it, reducing the numbers of the poor is a desirable outcome. Spraying powdered aluminum oxide at high altitudes by airplane, a phenomenon known as chemtrails, is a rather new method of population control that is restricted to NATO countries and is aimed at breaking the back of organic and traditional farmers to make room for corporations and their genetically modified crops. The aluminum sprayed falls to the ground and poisons the soil and the water, which has two intended consequences. First, it makes the growing of traditional or heirloom seeds impossible and forces farmers into bankruptcy, thus freeing the land for purchase by agrogiants who stand ready with aluminum-resistant genetically modified seeds, and secondly, Aluminum binds with fluoride compounds and greatly increases fluoride toxicity, therefore reducing the human body's toxicity threshold level previously thought safe. In other words, you can do far more damage to human health with aluminum fluoride than you can do with just fluoride, and you need less of it. That is why, for example, the spraying of aerosolized aluminum is far more prevalent on the western seaboard of Canada and the US where tap water fluoridation is scarce and people ingest fluoride from bottled water and soft drinks as well as canned foods but at lower levels than people whose tap water is fluoridated. Poor countries do not have water treatment plants and therefore cannot fluoridate their tap water. Salt fluoridation requires the political will and stability necessary to co-opt a select few politicians and bureaucrats. But Africa's political landscape is volatile and forever changing. And milk fluoridation is expensive and morally reprehensible as it targets innocent children through free milk school programs and sickens them when they're young and defenseless. African leaders, moreover, have largely resisted international pressure to poison their people. That is why the depopulation lobby has devised effective methods of population control for Africa specifically, and more recently for other poor and reluctant countries whose voluntary cooperation was impossible to gain. If the depopulation lobby could not control the number of people born into the world, then they would increase the number of people leaving this world. In other words, if they could not tackle the population problem at the front end of life by controlling fertility, they would and did tackle it at the back end of life by increasing morbidity and mortality. This was deemed necessary for Africa, which resisted any and all attempts at population control. The HIV AIDS virus was specifically created for the sub-Saharan African population by a cooperative effort between Soviet and American scientists 
in the employ of their nation's military-industrial complexes. It was designed to do maximum damage by undermining the immune system and to have an affinity for people of color. It gradually achieved its intended goal once it was introduced into the bloodstreams of countless innocents in Africa, Brazil, and Haiti by the World Health Organization through its smallpox immunization program that ended in 1980. Infection is as high as 30% in some African nations. And 70% of all AIDS deaths occur in Africa. More than 1 million people die in Africa from AIDS annually, and nearly 2 million new infections are registered every year. Bioengineered flu strains such as N1H1, the swine flu, and the bird flu viruses have been used to manufacture mass fear of pandemics and condition the public to the practice of mandatory vaccines or government-mandated vaccinations programs. This will allow the authorities to target specific populations when and if the eugenicists decide that a new deadly strain must be introduced into an unyielding population, as it was done in Africa, Haiti and Brazil until 1980. Genetically modified organisms are the newest and most sophisticated weapon in the eugenic arsenal and are intended for the developing world where chemical population control methods cannot be applied due to poor infrastructure. Primary GMO crops are corn, canola, cotton and soybean. Fierce resistance to GMO crops has, however, put into doubt their viability as a global fertility depressing agent. Their advantage, however, lies in the fact that the people targeted will be growing their own poison and paying for it, which makes GMOs ideal for poor nations whose governments cannot afford to pay for population control of any kind, be it chemical, biological, or bacteriological. Their advantage lies also in the fact that they can be engineered to do as little or as much damage as is desirable, and no one will be any wiser for it. Ever since the United Nations assumed primary control and responsibility